Today I'm going to be covering the fifth chapter of Octane Module Development Series, and focusing on managers and interfaces. Again, before I uh, dive into the code, uh, I wanted to cover that if you want to get involved with the Octane community, you should go to www.octane.org. Uh, or if you want to access the code, um, you can go to github.com slash octane slash octane dot framework. Uh, and if you want to access the code that's uh, related to the sample module that I've been covering as part of this tutorial series, you can go to github.com slash octane slash dnf dot projects. And with that, we're going to shift over to Visual Studio. So we'll go to our sample project first. Um, and one thing that uh, I wanted to mention is most module projects will have a special folder in the server uh, project for manager. If we open that up, we have a single class there that was created for us um, by the module creator template. And I'm going to explain what the purpose of this manager class is in just a moment. Before I do that, uh, I want to open up the client project. And I mentioned in our very first session about the module info um, interface. I'm going to open the module info interface for this module. And I'm going to take, point out this particular line, server manager type. What this property basically tells Octane is that if you are looking for the implementation of certain um, interfaces which provide extra functionality, you should look for them in this particular location. So for this module, it's going to look for implementations for a few key interfaces in DNF, dnf.projects.manager.projectManager class, which is part of the server project, or that the basically is part of the, the server assembly. So this is how things get wired up, and this is very important. So you absolutely have to specify the server manager type if you're implementing some of the optional interfaces which are part of, of uh, Octane. So let's go back to the server project for a moment and we'll go to the manager. And we can see that this manager class implements two interfaces. It implements the iInstallable interface and the iPortable interface. So these, these have very specific functionality and meaning within the Octane framework. So let's focus first on iInstallable. So what is iInstallable? So let's switch over to Octane for a moment and look at the iInstallable interface. Well, it has two methods that are part of it, install and uninstall. The install method will pass a information about the particular tenant, which like we know from prior sessions is related to the specific database and it'll pass information related to the version of the module which is being installed. Um, similarly, uninstall will pass information around about the tenant, which is the database, um, and it's related to uninstalling a module. So let's go back to our, to our module now, and we'll take a look at the implementation of some of these methods. So install, what does install do? Oh, it's actually using um, a built-in, um, service that's part of Octane, which executes actual SQL script. So it's executing a SQL script. Um, it's passing in the tenant, which has the database information. Um, it's, it's passing in a class name. So execute script needs to know which assembly to look at, because like I mentioned before, if we scroll down to the scripts area, this is the installation script, dnf.projects version 1.0.0.sql. It's an embedded resource that's part of this assembly. So when we call execute script, it needs to know what assembly to look in for the script that's identified by this name. So it's going to look for, again, DNF projects, and then the version that's passed in, which is, of course, version 1 to begin with, um, and .sql. And so th that's the way that it actually knows to execute the installation script. And if, um, if there was, let's say, uh, more than one installation script, they should be named like 100, 101, 102. And how Octane knows to execute them 
is again, if we go back to the module info, this other node here, this other property, release versions, is really important because this contains a comma delimited list of all of the different versions of a module which have ever existed. So maybe the current version is version 105. And from and in past history, there's been a version 100, a comma 101, comma 102. It basically defines all of the release versions that have ever existed, official release versions, that is. And then when Octane goes to install, it's going to say, oh, okay, well, I'm trying to install version 105, which means I have to run all of the scripts between, well, to get me up to version 105. And that list comes from this release versions list. So again, this is a comma delimited list of every official release version that's ever been done for a particular module. And going back into the, this um, install for each script, for each version that is part of that release versions list, it's going to pass in that version number. So first it's gonna pass in version 100 and then it's gonna execute the 100 script. Then it's gonna pass in 101 and it's gonna execute the 101 script and so on until it gets up to the, the most recent version. Um, when you're uninstalling, it assumes that there is only one uninstall script and it's the uninstall script is, needs to be smart enough that it needs to know how to clean up after itself depending on if there were any prior versions or not. So again, it's executing the uninstall script. And so what that's, the, the implementation of these two methods basically fulfills the contract for iInstallable. The other thing that uh, should be kept in mind is these two methods can do other um, activities as well. So within the install method, if you wanted to execute custom code related to a specific version. Let's say it, you needed to clean up some files in the file system for version 102. You can call your you know, system.io methods in this install method as well, and that'll be executed by the Octane framework. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you wanna, or, or what you can do during installation and uninstallation. Um, because it is a very basic method and you're free to implement whatever code you want inside of it. All right, so let's switch over now to iPortable. iPortable is the other interface that this module is implementing. And let's take a look at what iPortable is. So iPortable is defined as having a couple of methods. Um, one method is export module and one is import module. Um, export module, um, you, it passes in the module reference. Um, and then it's up to the module to implement whatever logic it needs to, to basically export the content of this module uh, into, typically it would be in a, a JSON format. Similarly, the equivalent, the, the opposite, the reciprocal of that is import module. And so import module can be used to import content into a module that's part of your site. And then of course, there's a nice reminder here that says you need to set the server assembly name in your iModule interface if you're going to implement um, these two methods. So if we go back to the dnf.projects, um, we can see export module. It's pretty basic. So export module um, calls the repository. It, does, it gets the, the projects that have been defined. And then it just uses the JSON serializer to serialize all of the um, all of the objects that are part of that collection into a JSON collection, and it returns the content. Similarly, um, the import will accept some content, um, and it, it also passes in a version number because this content may have been exported from an earlier version of the module, so you need to be aware of that because you might have some differences in your logic and your import logic so that it can handle the, the, uh, the, the different um, content that's passed in. So the con based on the contents that passed in, it de deserializes it into a collection, and then it iterates through that collection, um, and it determines whether or not the content um, already exists or not. If it doesn't exist, it adds it. If it does exist, it updates it. So actually in this case, it just adds the project and adds the project activity. 
So this is only doing an append operation. But this is how import and export works. And then if we actually want to go into Octane and take a look at how this actually works in action, we'll run the Octane framework. And we'll go to the My page where this module exists. We go into edit mode. We go into manage settings. Um, and we can see import and export. So I'll choose export. I choose the export button. And uh, it executed that code that we just looked at for export. And it exported a collection of all of the different objects that were part of my installation. Um, in theory, I could basically copy this content. Uh, and then I can go to import. And I can enter this content and I could say import. Um, and I don't really want to do that because it'll duplicate everything in this particular instance, but it would import all of the information um, that's here. And uh, because it's a very generic method, or it contains very generic methods, the software developer has a lot of flexibility in terms of the types of information that you want to import or export. This example, it's, it's, very, sim it's very simplistic in that it's uh, exporting everything. Um, you may want to only export specific uh, properties that are part of these objects. But I mean, you have full control over both sides of the import and export equation. Um, and so it's up to you um, to, to figure out how you would like to deal with import and export. Um, but like I said, um, in order to execute this, uh, you need to make sure that you implement or that you specify the server manager type property in the iModule interface, because that's the way that Octane knows how to deal with this. Uh, and with that, I think that we've covered um, managers and um, optional module interfaces. Um, and the next session, we're going to cover scheduled jobs.